hi everybody. Um, today I'm going to present you the result of my master uh, thesis that I did in Paris 1 Panthéon Sorbonne a long, long time ago, back in 2012. But also a few preliminary results from my PhD, which uh, I'm doing at University of Western Australia within a big project called Kimberley Vision, which is focused on rock art and and occupation site within the northeast Kimberley. So quite luckily, I have been be able to work sorry on the Kimberley region for my master, which is um, a region from the north, tropi tropical north of Australia, um, which is basically twice the size of England in terms of size. Like you can see, Australia is a huge continent, um, and this region is particularly particularly interesting as it is maybe one of the key entry points of population on this continent in during the Pleistocene but it also show um, an interesting pattern uh, of change in lithics industries during the Holocene. Um, the change and the dichotomy between Pleistocene industries and Holocene industries have been um, quite I have a quite long history in Australia, like for a long time, the first typologist, the first lithic, the first lithic analyst, uh, have um, defined two big industries. So, places and industries were, were called um, the core tool scrapper, um, sorry, I'm a bit stressed, <laughs> uh, like, yeah, core tool industries. And later on, during the Holocene, uh, they used to define a small tool tradition, and these, by, these two phase, phases were used to be applied through the continent, um, and yeah, with no regional variation so whatsoever, until in the 60s and, and 70s, Mulvaney, one of the Australian archaeologists, uh, said that um, reanalyze artifacts from Kenneth's caves and said that. Australian lithic industries were too vari um, variable, um, and maybe doing traditional typology weren't a good solution to grasp the variation between place and archaeological sites, and, and so on. Um, it's what this assertion was backed up with Haydn um, observation of population from the Western Desert, uh, who he managed observing Aborigines napping and using stone tools, he managed to see that blank morphology wasn't a criterion for selection for making tools or being used, so they can either be used grow or, or like, retouched. Um, nowadays, um, a famous uh, Australian lithic analyst like Peter Ishka, uh, Christopher Clarkson um, acknowledged more for um, quantification of reduction in lithic analysis. Um, so it's basically it's more like they are more attached to behavioral ecology and evolutionary archaeology. Um, in their work, they want to they gather morphological, morphometric um, data and try to to quantify the amount of reduction that the tools have undergone. Um, it's need also, they also acknowledge to, to look at more regional scales um, because like Australia is a big continent and so looking at more reduced regional, sorry, I'm really stressed. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, um, yeah, so. It's a crowd full of friends. Yeah, 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 this is a story. <laughs> uh, so yeah, more, they acknowledge to look at like regional scale analysis. So Christopher, Christopher Clarkson did for Waterman country, which is situated in Arnhem Land on the map, not so far away from the Kimberley, 200 kilometers away from the site I'm looking at now for my PhD. Um, so what Clarkson found through his, uh, his analysis using North American kind of approach is that stone tool types were probably the same part of the same continent. So points from blades, blades were made in points which were like reducing first unifacially and then bifacially to attain, like you can see on the right hand of the screen, 
completely bifacially flaked points. Uh, it's a simple scraper, so morphology and scraper are due to the amount of reduction they undergone, like following Dibble's um, theory. Um, this model is quite a success, um, and for him, this reduction, reduction continuum and, and this, the existence of point technology in Arnhem Land is linked to the need of um, easy re reemplaceable toolkits, um, which help to cope with climatic instability in this region and make people um, <laughs> that people have a ready to end toolkits with them wherever they go when they encounter like scarce resources. Um, this model has also a bit a success as it was also applied in the region when I'm working at now. So in the southwest Kimberley, uh, Tim Maloney found that some the pattern of the sorry um, so the points but happier in the Kimberley, just like in Arnhem but later, 5,000 years before, um, are made on standardized blank and are then part of a <coughs> reduction continuum. Uh, so first of all, you have the standardized blank, then it's reduced into um, an unifacial point and then a bifacial point. The only type of tool which were um, uh, not in this continuum is the backed artifacts, which like follow its own reduction path. Um, and this industry of the middle ocean, middle ocean industries are also thought to be um, realized to cope with more climatic instability. Um, but what Maloney found as well is that 10, uh, 1,000 years before, um, people were making other new type of tool, um, bifacially flaked tool, but finished with pressure flaking. And and for him and to Mahmoud as well, who work in the same area, these two were maybe more linked to to social connection and social. Um, what he said is that that the specific technique of pressure flaking. Um, imply to have social transmission of this knapping practice and so on. So it's the first time where uh, we go out of behavioral uh, ecological model to cope with um, and climatic instability to so something more social. Um, and we can say that the data from the master, my master, and the new. <laughs> And from my PhD, tend to to tell a kind of different story. Um, outside of lithics, you've got um, rock art, which uh, for the Holocene and Middle Holocene, mostly 6,000 BP, seems to show more regional variation and so on. Uh, and um, mm, sorry. That's my presentation. Sorry. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna present you my master data. So sorry. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I didn't have my thing so far. It's just like. Okay. Oh no, you got my okay. And I just eyes on the desk thing. Uh, no. Is it the no. same question? Is it top middle? Yeah. Top middle? Yeah. Oh. Okay. So which one? Mm. So I was, oh, you mean the slide? It was this one. And, yeah. and that's okay. And but we are not in, we need to split on the desk. Uh, and no, well, I'm going to manage without, even if I'm stressed. I'm sorry. Um, there we go. Okay, let's go. <laughs> okay, so Southwest Kimberley said that we've got this new introduction of points 5,000 years BP, which were on standardized blank and and just part. The points are from the same reduction continuum, 
And then in 1000 years BP, you've got both new pressure flipping points, which are maybe linked to social relationship and social learning, at least implied by the techniques to have like social bond and language, so on to transmit these, these techniques. Uh, in the Northwest Kimberley, this, the continuum of points is not applicable. So for my master thesis, I work on Kununara Rock Shelter, which is uh, in, the, in the right and left hand side of the, the map. Um, and for my PhD, I'm working on a few sites. They are not all there, but uh, you can see like, different site type I'm looking at. Uh, which include like rock shelter, because archaeology in Australia have a lot of biases because we are looking more at caves and so on. So we start to, at least for this region, to open open opener sites. Um, and also gathering quarries, like quarry workshop, uh, the reduction quarry, by the way. Um, so I'm going to present you the Kununara result. So Kununara is an old excavation made by Charlie Dorch in the 70s. Um, stratigraphy, it's a bit hard to read there because of the charcoal and the, the fire just like rubbish the place, make the sediment really dark and with no layers. So <coughs> basically the only solution is to excavate by like arbitrary excuse. Um, so as the first, when I came to the collection, um, the first surface layer are disturbed. So we decided with my research director at the time to just look at the older layer that um, starting 135 centimeter, which is below a uh, charcoal of of 3,000 BP, which have been calibrated by Tim Maloney at 3,441 uh, 3, BP. Um, so what I found looking at the stone tools over there is that, in contrary to what uh, Maloney have got in the southwest Kimberley, um, points are not always um, made on, on standardized legs. So we have a component, um, a part of Levallois technology over there, like little cores, which produce like um, standardized type of points, which are basically not for touch. And like points, unifacial and bifacial, could be realized on a simple flake struck from uh, river cobbles. Um, like the number six, uh, just the, the butt of the number six on the right hand side of the plate show um, the typical cortical shoulder of the, of the cobble, which have been from the flake. Um, and in other words, um, so, yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, and also, there is two types of bifacial point, I think it's important to stress, like there is probably bifacially struck point, uh, retouched points, but there is also like sh bifacial shaping there, which is far older than the one we saw in the Southwest Kimberley. So from the older sequences, we can see different uh, bifacial finding flakes in the older sequence, like big, like uh, the first stage of bifacial finding, like the two big one on the left, and the, also the finish, <coughs> the bifacial finding little flakes, as well as preforms and broken points. Um, and therefore, they are found through the sequence. So that means that bifacial finding, but without pressure flaking, were happening far before 1000 BP. Um, and they're diagnostic. And so that means that those kind of points are not part of this continuum, at least. Um, um, and so it's interesting to see that in comparison with. Uh, one of the first sites I studied for my PhD, um, there's maybe more variability than previous work in the Kimberley safe analytics. Um, so, uh, sorry. So, one of the first sites of my PhD is Umari, so KGR 037 in the 16A. Um, this site is a long sequence. Uh, a first, three first square were excavated by the Kimberley Vision team back in 2016. And from this first big sequence, we've got two dates. One, basically at the middle, which is really recent, 1000 BP. Uh, while we have a bottom date of 12,000, nearly 13,000 there. Um, so far, I've, I have studied uh, the stratigraphical, <coughs> stratigraphical unit one, two, three, and four. Um, 
and they gave a really interesting result in terms of variation in lithic industry for short-term periods. Um, for, first of all, uh, bifacial thinning, thin, thinning flakes are found through the sequence uh, with interesting pattern actually. The first layer is stratigraphical units. You find um, bifacial thin, thinning flakes uh, in two types of raw material, uh, uh, silicify sandstone and the sedimentary rocks which could be found in a riverbed nearby the site. Uh, it's really local material. Uh, sandstone is found where, everywhere around the open air site. And we have a gradual change towards more charity materials in stratigraphic units three and four. Um, and they are like virtually present in every layer of, of the site. Um, but that's not all as a variation. Uh, there's also a change in um, we can see difference like we don't see in in East Kimberley. Just like oh, losing it. Uh, so what we have found something interesting, what did which are not documented elsewhere um, in the sites uh, in in the Kimberley, is that they, there is an existence of leadlets and small flake production in crystal quartz, uh, which starts a bit before in in XU four and change through the XU. Um, this production, like the core testify for flex of really thin flex, but we can find to be a red touch in points like in XU12 and as little part of bloodlets in XU11. Um, and like I will characterize further the the, the change within the industries um, in my PhD later. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but maybe to, to say a bit more about my research. So this was the one of the open sites I've got to study um, and I will try to compare later on um, there are different site type because like there is different site activity as some site type like um, going through the, the different assemblages that I've got so far um, open sites are full of so differential planning uh, course tools and and deep touch of bloodlets and so on while uh, rock shelter seems to be sorry uh, seems to be more differential planning as well and we have like quarries were just like being um, Used for bifacial reduction. Um, so, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I wanted to say, to remember. Sorry, um, so, yeah, basically, I would like to, comparing those sites, I would like to see if there is like um, uh, offering, if another methodology offering a qualitative view of what's happening in every site, in site type. Uh, to see, uh, to see, and something different catchment of the place. Uh, see very <coughs> cultural differences between between within the area and and yeah. That's, uh, sorry, <laughs> I'm so sorry. So, let's finish there. Sorry. <laughs>